Hey everybody, welcome back. Y'all are gonna be proud of me. I actually built a real ham radio antenna. That's right, I built a uh, fan dipole for 80, 40, and 20 meters with the help of my good friend Leon out in New Hampshire, Kilo Charlie One Lima Bravo Lima with all his antenna technical support, we put this together. So we're gonna go through it. I'm gonna show you how we built it. And then uh, we'll go inside and I might show you the ham shack a little bit. And we'll make a few calls and see how well it works and give her a test. All right, so come on, let's go. We're going to get started here right at the beginning of the antenna, which is the feed line coming out of the house. I've got this board where I keep my uh, balance and lightning suppressors. Basically out of the shack, we've got a, a coax cable. It's 12 foot long and it comes up here to the bottom of my 4 to 1 ballon. It's an MFJ ballon and from there it goes up to my surge suppressor. And I've got someone that wants to help. What are you doing up there, buddy? <laughs> okay. And uh, from the from the uh, lightning suppressor, it goes uh, down this uh, 450 foam 450 ohm window line, supported by uh, the old uh, plastic electric fence post, and gets me over to the bottom of the pole. So we'll get here over to the pole where the feed line. Uh, meets the uh, insulator and the feed point here. Basically I got the 450 ohm ladder line coming up to an insulator, wraps around the back, comes over the front, and then goes over here to each leg of the dipole. All right, so basically um, I've got the, uh, the 80 meter, which is my longest, is going to be basically the, the support for the whole antenna, so that's pretty tightly spliced around itself uh, along with the feed line wire and then I've got the uh, 40 and the 20 meters wrapped in there behind it as well. Don't, uh, don't look at my kind of a uh, kind of messed up, uh, it kind of got out of hand there when I was wrapping things around but it's solid, it's good. Uh, eventually I might put some solder in there just to uh, solidify the connection there. But right now it's working great. And then I've got some PVC. Uh, these are 13 inches long and the wires are six inches apart. So I come in a half an inch here and then six and a half inches and then this is a uh, 12 and a half inches. So everything's uh, separated by six inches um, where they're together. One thing I learned in this process is you never know what to expect. I only operate in the SSB phone portion of the band, so I'm on the upper frequencies. And I cut the wire lengths longer than the recommended lengths, just with the expectation that I'll be trimming them back to bring them into resonance. I cut the 80 meters for 66 feet, 40 uh, meters for 34, and 20 meters for 17. I got the uh, rig expert out, looked at the zoom chart, and everything was way out of whack. Everything was way off uh, uh, too short, uh, basically. And I needed to add more wire. So on the 80 meters, I added five feet to bring it up to 71. On 40, I added 12 feet uh, to bring it up to 46 feet. And on 20 meters, I had to add 12 feet to that one as well for 29 feet. And that brought things a little closer to resonance. Uh, 20 meters, pretty much spot on, nice and flat. 40 meters could still stand some tweaking. It's still a little short, could be a little longer to swing, slide that, uh, that dip over into the upper portion of the band. 
and also on 80 meters as well um, not too bad uh, I could swing that over a little more to the left as well and bring that into resonance so that's something I'll work on as uh, I get more time but we're gonna use it as is now I've got an auto tuner so uh, we'll be able to tune things up that way so let's walk down the wire and see what we got here of course the 20 meters is the bottom one uh, 40 meters is the middle and 80 is on top basically on the separator here I put some uh, run it through a, a drill to hole and then I tie wrap these to kind of help it from sliding and keep it solid in that spot and the rest of these are pretty loose and uh, can slide through the spreader so we'll walk down here to where my 20 meters ends right here and basically I tied it off tied the wire off and then I put a string right here and that string goes all the way to the to the last spreader down there and that's what keeps this is what keeps the uh, the 20 meter wire tight is the tension on this string right here and then we'll walk down further and we'll walk down and it just kind of is loose through here so it keeps it tight we'll walk down here and here's the end of the 40 meters 40 meters again is tied off here and basically what I did was to keep the 20 meters tight I, I pulled it tight how I wanted it and with the tension and then I just wrapped this around through the hole and that's what uh, helps keep this pulled to uh, keep that all tight and then it also helps to pull the uh, 40 meters wire right here and keeps it tight and this again is tie wrap so it stays in one spot so the tension here keeps both wires 40 and 20 meters tight and then this rope or string continues on uh, to the end and this is just a just a little spreader to keep things separate and it goes up here to the end and it ties off the 80 meters ties off up there I've got it uh, if I can reach it so basically I've got the string going over to my end support. I've got it down about oh, two inches maybe. And that keeps enough tension down here on the bottom uh, to pull and keep my string tight and keep the wires, uh, the 40 and 20 meters tight. Now let's look at the, uh, the, the end support. So we've got it from the pole here to my end support mechanism basically it's a uh, series of pulleys and a counterweight here to keep the wires tight and basically the wire there the string rope comes up and I tie it off here uh, just to keep it tight here so basically I did this um, with the reasoning that uh, I want to keep my when I raise and lower it like for ice storms I will be able to I will be able to keep the wire tight um, without having it laying on the ground but it also has enough flexibility enough counterweight here where if I do get a lot of weight on the wire this will rise up and it'll lower the wire there's just perfect tension on it and it'll let the wire flex in the wind and uh, any weather ice or anything like that so that works pretty well that's how I built it that way um, just so I have a lot of flexibility on that wire uh, for ice and wind here in Iowa okay all right so I'm gonna go ahead and walk up there and I'm gonna show you how this weight counterbalance or counterweight mechanism works when I launch up and raise up the wire so I'm gonna go do that so you're probably wondering, Kev, what's up with the pith helmet? Well, you know, out here with this wire up and down the pulley at the top of the uh, pole up there, there's always a possibility that that eye bolt up there could break and snap off. Next thing I got is a steel pulley coming straight down on top of me. And I really don't want that to zonk me in the head. So I uh, take a little bit of safety precaution out here just to wear a hard hat or something to cover my head in case that ever happens. So let's go ahead and I'm going to start pulling it up. And this is how I raise and lower it for ice storms. 
uh, major winds, storms coming in. And uh, sometimes this ladder line likes to get a little, little looped around. But uh, you should see on your end down there, the counterweight moving up. Yep, as I'm raising it, sometimes I have to stop it and untangle the, uh, the window line here. Yep, okay, and let's make sure we're going up good and straight, and we are. All right, that looks good. And I do have another Velcro strap on here, uh, which I'm just gonna leave off for now. I'll put that on later. So I launch it, pull it all the way up. You should see the counterweight at your end, raise it up. All right, there's my height. So I go ahead, let it down just a few inches off the pulley, and then I secure this end of the rope so it stays solid and up there and I secure the rest of these ropes. So that's how the counterbalance works on both ends. And my wires are tight and everything's in, uh, in good shape. Inverted V fan dipole. So here's what it looks like fully launched. Comes down to my uh, end support there and goes up 45 feet to the peak and down the other to the north end up there. And that concludes the antenna build portion of the video. If that's all you're interested in, I appreciate you stopping by and watching. And uh, if you'd like to continue on, we're gonna go inside and uh, I'm gonna demonstrate a few uh, calls on each of the bands uh, that we made this past week testing the antenna. But before we go in, uh, I wanted to show you that uh, my ham shack is totally off-grid on the radios. All the radios are powered off-grid by solar and battery power. This is my solar panel. It's a 40-watt panel. sits out here and keeps my batteries charged inside. So let's go inside now, and uh, we'll run through that quick and uh, show you that portion of the video. So we're inside to the ham shack. I've got my desk and the ICOM 705, which is my primary radio. I typically run five watts or less. And for a tuner, I have the MAT 705 Auto Tuner, and that's connected coax through a couple switches and goes outside to the Ballon. Kilo Zero Kilo Lima Bravo. Kilo Zero Sugar Lima Bravo, thank you. Five eight fifty eight over. A correction, Kilo Lima Bravo over. Kilo Lima Bravo, Roger, go. Roger, you're five nine five nine over. Thanks, I was Kevin. Uh, my pleasure, seventy three. Thank you, seven three. Thank you, I'm sure five one Denmark accent. Roger, uh, Kilo Lima Bravo. QSO, what was the report over? Well, so there you have it. I really like this fan dipole antenna. Uh, I think it performs pretty well. And like I said, I've only had it a week now, but so far I'm liking what I'm seeing. I really like the mechanics of it, uh, the counterweights and the pulley system, uh, the ability to lower the wire uh, proactively when I see storms coming, ice storms, high winds. Um, you know, in the ice, will the steel pulleys freeze up? Probably, but if I'm proactive enough and get it lowered uh, ahead of time, it won't have far to fall when it comes <laughs> comes <laughs> crashing down. So, but I think uh, I really enjoy that piece of it where I can uh, manage manage it a lot better. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it was fun building the uh, the antenna, and I learned a lot in the process. And I'll probably do another one somewhere down the road too, another type of antenna. Uh, but this one I think is going to be a keeper. I'll be using this one for a while. 
Well, thanks for stopping by, everybody. I'll say 7-3.